Things are imploding in the Middle East again. This time, it might not be the Jews' fault, but don't count on it. AOC sounds like she wants to shake up the Democratic Party again, and we can learn a little something from this 70-year-old man. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbasses Talking Politics. I don't know if you can hear me better now, but I switched back to my old microphone because the new microphone just didn't sound very good. So we'll just go with that again. All right. So lots of news. Um, It happened again. On Friday, Hezbollah, who's a terrorist group from Lebanon, decided to fire anywhere from 10 to 20 rockets into Israel. Uh, FYI, Hezbollah is a terrorist group. There's not a big shock about that. Not to be confused with the other terrorist groups like the Islamic Jihad or the Palestinian Authority or Hamas. Those guys are actually located in the Gaza Strip and West Bank. The Jerusalem Post uh, reported (coughs) a heavy barrage of close to 20 rockets were fired from Lebanon into northern Israel on Friday, activating the Iron Dome and setting off sirens throughout the area. The Israeli National, the Israel National News reported, air raid sirens sounded at 10.55 a.m. Friday morning in Neve Ativ, in I whatever and kibbutz snir snir in northern israel local residents reported hearing explosions in the area according to reports the iron dome missile defense system intercepted several of the 10 rockets which were fired at northern israel from shebia farms in lebanon okay so the iron dome has been protecting israel for jeez years now and uh, it takes down most missiles. I think it has a uh, intercept rate of about 90%. Uh, not all rockets were intercepted, uh, but the ones that weren't just landed uh, harmlessly into open areas of Israel. No one was hurt or killed, and there was no damage. Um, this comes after three missiles were launched by Hamas uh, into Israel on Wednesday, the Washington uh, Post reported, quote, in a statement sent via WhatsApp, a media coordinator for Hezbollah said, quote, at 11.15 a.m. on Friday, in, and in response to Israeli air raids on open ground in southern Lebanon, early Thursday, two groups in the Islamic resistance bombarded open land in a perimeter of the Israelis, Israeli occupation's positions in Sheba Farms with 10 of its 122, I think it means millimeter, grenade rockets. Now, I don't know about you. I haven't read anything about Israel attacking Lebanon. So I think this is probably BS and leave it to the Washington Post to sit back and push that garbage if it is garbage. I'm assuming it is because we would have heard about it. Um, Here's the thing. The excuse Lebanon is attacking Israel has nothing to do with Israel attacking Lebanon. That's that's not that's not a thing. And we know what is happening in Lebanon right now because they've got some real issues. And what they're doing is the same thing the Palestinian Authority and Hamas did a couple of months ago. They're trying to deflect from bigger problems in that country. And what those bigger problems, the economy of Lebanon is collapsing in a way that is rarely seen. There, the mass, I don't know if you remember this massive explosion in Beirut. It killed 241 people. Well, it also caused some major damage to the infrastructure of Lebanon. They are now suffering through major energy shortages. Shortages to the point that electricity keeps going on and off. So they've got that problem. They're also experience, experiencing hyperinflation. And it is making things just incredibly expensive over there. The World Bank says that the government could be facing the worst depression since the 19th century. The World Bank stated, quote, Lebanon's GDP plummeted from close to U.S. $55 billion in 2018 to an estimated $33 billion in 2020. 
the the U.S. GDP capita falling by around 40 percent. Such a brutal and rapid contraction is usually associated with conflicts or wars. This illustrates the multitude of economic depression that the country is enduring, with sadly no clear turning point on the horizon, given the disastrous deliberate policy in action. The social impact of the crisis, which are already dire, could rapidly become catastrophic. More than half the population is likely below the national poverty line. Lebanon, with a history of civil war and conflicts, faces realistic threats to its already flat, fragile social peace. See what I'm saying? They're having a problem now. People are actually getting fed up with not having any money. I mean, we could be looking at an Arab Spring over there. The Wall Street Journal also reported, power outages have become so frequent that restaurants time their hours to schedule the electricity from private generators. Brawls have erupted in supermarkets as shoppers rush to buy bread, sugar, and cooking oil before they run out, or hyper hyperinflation topping 400% for food puts the prices out of reach. Medical professionals have fled just as the pandemic hammers the country with a new wave of infections. Thefts are up 62% and murder rates are rising fast. Now, 400% for food. To give you an example of how bad is that is, the United States is really being hit hard by inflation. Our inflation up in the last six months is up to 5.8%. They're up to 400%. This also shows you what happens when you get some garbage totalitarian terrorist governments running you. You know why they didn't care? Because they're, the people who are in power over there are not going to be affected by uh, economic bad news. So, you know that type of government. That government that the left is constantly telling us we should implement here. And the Biden administration is trying to implement here. Because yes, the left is very sympathetic to Hezbollah. They love Hezbollah. They hate the Jews. They hate Israel. Very sympathetic to Hezbollah. This is why Lebanon is attacking Israel. They need a diversion. They are having internal strife. People are killing each other. People are unhappy. They're going to be starving soon. The government is falling apart and is looking at riots. And so the best way to do that is blame Israel, start a war, to try and buy some time in between this, this hyperinflation and crime problem and their way of trying to figure it out. Because once they do that, once they decide to get a war against Israel, you know what the United States is going to do? They're going to blame Israel, and then they're going to say, we need to send money over to uh, Lebanon. That's what happened during the fight, the, the skirmish, the month-long skirmish between uh, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. They suddenly started giving money to them. Pretty pathetic. But that's not the worst. That's not the only thing that's falling apart. Um, okay, when the United States stated that they were going to pull out of, out of Afghanistan, I was a little kind of on the fence on that whole thing. I, even, I would even say that I was more sympathetic to leaving Afghanistan. Um, Afghanistan is a mess. It's always going to be a mess. It's always going to be a fourth world country. They really don't have a government. They're just made up of a bunch of warlords. And us being there for 20 years didn't change that. The government is still weak and very brittle. So the government could fall at any time. The only reason we had a presence in Afghanistan is that we had control of the Taliban. The Taliban really couldn't, wouldn't fight. The Taliban uh, kept to their little places and we kept the government in place. Now, does that mean we should stay there forever? I wasn't sure it was going to help, but we've stayed in Germany since the 40s. We've been in Japan since the 40s. I mean, we, we, and that is a presence the United States has in those areas, which is a good presence. Now, 
the kicker here, and this is what they, the Biden administration doesn't talk a lot about, our presence there was minimal, very minimal. We haven't lost a soldier in Afghanistan, I think it was a year or a year and a half, because the Taliban is backing off. They saw what we did to ISIS. They want nothing to do with us. Joe Biden, just out of nowhere, decided to pull every soldier out of the country, and that's it. The right-leaning news organization said this was a bad idea because the government was weak, the military was not effective, and the Taliban would start to try and take control of the country. They also said there was a danger to the homeland because the Taliban had always been known to train terrorists. 9-11, a bunch of the terrorists were trained in Afghanistan. Well... It turns out those right-leaning organizations, news organizations, might have been correct. The Taliban seized control of the nor- key northern city of Kunduz uh, on Sunday, as well as Sardepol de- and Talagan. Oops. Not good. I mean, literally, we pulled out last month and they've already taken over three of the big cities out there. Now, before we get excited, the capital of Kabul is still safe for now. Because the Taliban, there's been heavy fighting and the Taliban just can't keep going up up north or down south to Kabul. The United States has also been working with the Afghani government and has been bombing Taliban, Taliban strongholds. And they've killed several of the Taliban leadership. But... None of this stuff was happening when we were there last month. It didn't start until Joe Biden said, we're leaving and we're going to be leaving by 9-11, which is just like, oh, man. So good job, old Joe. Now, I'm not a foreign policy guy. I, again, I really don't like Afghanistan. It's just a big hole in the middle of a desert. It's not by any seaports. It really it doesn't have any resources. It really is a weak country. But it is a country that was raising terrorists against the United States, and it is a country that at least we had a foothold in that country in case we needed it. But it looks like Joe Biden, his big mouth, and his stupid policy may have just led Afghanistan into a civil war. So there you have it. In more friendly news, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez has said she is not ruling out a run for senator against Chuck Schumer. That she may go out there, and in 2022, Two, she may go and try to uh, try to primary him. She said on CNN, I know it drives everybody nuts, but the way that I fe- really feel about this and the way that I really approach politics and my political career is that I do not look at things and I do not set my course positionally. I know there's a lot of people who do not believe that, but I really... I can't operate in the way that I operate and do the things that I do in politics while trying to aspire, or try to be aspiring to other things or calculating to other things. For what it's worth, Senator Schumer and I have been working very closely on a lot of legislation that, to me, is important. And so, we shall see. I think, basically, she this, this statement... Because I had to read this statement a couple of times to, to see, okay, where is it that she actually said anything that she was going to run? She actually really, this was a politically, this was a very good answer. Because she didn't say she wouldn't, but then she didn't say she would. I personally, and I'm not sure how they're going to actually um, set it, redistrict the districts, because you know this year they're redistricting New York, I think lost one or two representatives and rumor had it she might have been on the block so we have to see how they're going to redistrict and we got to see how she's going to where she's going to be placed in 2022 but i think if she decided to go after chuck schumer that would be delicious both are leftists both are mean as honey badgers it would be wonderful to see these two tear each other apart AOC would definitely be the underdog. She's stupid, and as far as Congress goes, she's extremely ineffectual, and that's going to come up. She is down, as a matter of fact, remember I said, I think she was ranked something like 420 out of 438 representatives as far as effectiveness goes. 
she's one of the she's probably the lowest squad member as far as effect, uh, effectiveness goes. But these two are going to have to fight about the issues. They could attack each other personally, and I think a majority of their fight is going to be just that. It's going to be personal. But they are going to have to argue about policy, and they're both left-wingers. So I have to say that I think Chuck Schumer says things that are a little bit more literate, a little bit more understandable than what AOC says. So I'm not thinking that AOC is going to have an easy time swinging into the uh, Senate, uh, especially over Chuck Schumer, who's been in the Senate for 40 years and is a consummate politician. So we'll have to see how that's going to go. God, I can't wait for three months from now when they start, because that's coming. 2022 is coming up. Don't forget, it's mid-August right now. And these guys, November, is it's only a year from November that we have those we're going to have those races, and you better believe that those races are going to start building up. And that Schumer-AOC fight will just be fun for Republicans because Democrats own that city, but own that state. But the reality is I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see that happen. That would be absolutely phenomenal. And as weird as our politics are, I got to tell you, I can believe it could happen. For years, women's groups have begged the state of California not to allow men who say they're women into women's prisons simply because they say they're men, they're women. But that has been made into law and the state follows it, must follow it. Even men who have committed violent crimes against women would be allowed to be put into a woman's prison if he just said he is a transgender. And mind you, we're not talking... He's had the operation or anything like that. I'd w- Hey, here's a newsflash. If I'm stuck in a men's prison, I'd want to be in a women's prison too. I can act like I'm, I'm uh, a woman. Sure. Probably cleaner, less violent, and there are actually women there. The state handled the controversy by actually giving prisoners in women's jails condoms. No kidding. So in Jan, let's go a little bit into the, maybe I'm giving too much, but in January of this year, California passed SB 132, which allowed men who said they were women, even men with all their gear and have committed acts of violence up to and including rape against women, could request a transfer to a women's prison. So far this year, there have been 300 prisoners who have requested such a transfer Notice that, by the way, notice that um, it's men requesting transfers to women's prisons. It's not women who are requesting transfers to men's prisons. Yeah, that should be, I'd like to see that statistic. So far, not one request has been turned down and 20 have already been processed. A group called the Women's Liberation Front has been fighting this law because they said this is just insane. And the state basically are handing out condoms. They've actually brought up a, they brought a women's health, reproductive health uh, 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 clinic into these prisons, focusing primarily on pregnancies. The WLF said the response by the state is, quote, tacit admission by officials that women should not expect to be raped when housed in a prison with men, which one of the inmates described as like the worst possible nightmare. That's what one said. Here, let's 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 hear what another inmate said when she found out that three men were transferred to Central California Women's Facility. She stated, quote, how do we feel safe in our community? When we reach out for help, we get nothing. There has been an assault on women and we still are silenced, end quote. She's right. I hate to say it. I'm sure she's making this more of a systemic issue, but this is a a systemic issue now. You are systemically prejudiced against women in this case and biological women. I mean, real women, not fake men, but not fake women. Another inmate said, does anyone care that we're being forced to house with a six foot two, two hundred and fifty 
plus pound man, men with penises that are here for brutally raping women? We have been warned by officials in this prison. More are coming with worse charges. Where is the safety concern for us? If we say we are in fear, we are the ones locked up. Well, shockingly, what we expected happened. The Women's Liberation Front released a statement stating, quote, We have now heard of seven different people inside CCFW, that's a Central California Women's Facility, that at least one woman, possibly more, is now pregnant after being housed with a male felon who was transferred to the women's prison under SB 132. Our connections tell us that at least three of the men have now been moved to administrative segregation. Well, that's awesome. So much for California following the science. I thought trans women couldn't get real women pregnant. Hmm. But then again, I also thought that trans women didn't have penises. But I guess I'm wrong there, too. Now, not only do we have to pay for the pregnancies of these women, probably have to pay for the mental health they're going to need for being stressed out about all this. Now we're going to have to pay extra money to keep these men who say they are women in segregation. Good job, California. Absolutely. Slow clap. Great job. So I was going to play a TikTok video today, but I'm not going to do that. Um, because this video, which is about three minutes long, and I had to break it up into a couple of pieces, um, this is something I honestly believe we can actually learn from. So in Washington, I'll give you the the story, and I'll tell you what we can actually learn. Um, in Washington State, an owner of a Star Wars mem memorabilia store, a 70-year-old man named Don Sucher, put up a sign in his window jokingly stated, the release of the new Dr. Seuss book called If You Were Born With a Bleep, You're Not a Chick. Okay, think about what chick rhymes with. A male appendage. Okay, so you you got it. I, I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming you got it. This guy is a 70-year-old Vietnam veteran. Now, while walking down the street, this city council, councilman from the town of Albaldine named Tessa Meskis, who is a man who wears dresses, just saw the sign, got upset, walked in, and got into a fight with Susher. Listen to this. You're going you're gonna to put that up and you're going to let everybody else see it? Well, everybody but when loves you're confronted it. by a trans woman, you're Every, going to hide it? Everybody loves it. No, they I don't think so. They take pictures of it. They post it. Uh-huh. Nine out of ten customers love it. Yeah, you know what? It's bullsh**. No, what you're spouting is bullsh**. No, it's not. Trans it women are women, sir. That sign is bullsh**. Of a trans woman. Trans women are women. Your well, I'm telling you, as a man, that's bullsh**. Uh-huh. Okay. You know what? Nobody confronts your ass. That's the problem. Really? If they'd say... Really? What the... You want to bet? What the... <laughs> Is you know what, have do you know how many there? people you've embarrassed at, oh, at City wow. Hall? Me, embarrassment there have to, to City there Hall? There have to really. tolerate that shit. To the city, sir. You are an embarrassment to this city. I am a pillar in the city. Everybody knows. I'm a pillar in this. Now, oh, you yeah. do that. Do you know why? Every time some bullshit like this happens, uh -huh. my sales go up because people are wanting this. Really? You are not, Let's wake you up you to are truth, not. Sir. You're not a woman. You don't look like a woman. Uh -huh. You don't act like a woman. Really? Your f head. What's oh, wrong really? with you? I'm well, look at yourself. For Christ's sakes. Really? For Christ's sakes, who would want to even, even be close? My God. Really? It's horrible. I don't know why. You are I, not. Why am I so you are to not you? a chick. Why am I so horrible? To Do you, you still have a? You know what? That is none of your. Business. Do you think there's one person that really thinks that you're a chick? I know a lot of people that agree with me and that accept me for who you I know, am. And the fact that you're going to be here with a sign nobody, like that nobody, is bullsh**. Nobody confronts you. That's yes, the problem. Do. You make me That's uncomfortable. Bullshit. Because really? you're get not. Get away from me. Then you get out of my store. I will. Thank you. So this guy dressed up as a chick walks into someone's shop. And just starts chastising him for having this sign up.
Now, mind you, I think it's tacky to have to sign up. And I wouldn't think that using that type of language in front of your shop is really a good marketing scheme. But, I mean, it is his shop. And what he's saying that doesn't insult me. I think it's just tacky. I wouldn't want my kid to see that. But, I mean, it, it's it's tacky. But he's 70 years old. I know lots of 70-year-olds. Guess what? They're tacky. But here's the thing. If I saw something like that and I didn't like it, and I'm not saying I would dislike this sign. I, I think it's tacky. But I, I would dis I'd still walk in the shop. And if I don't like the sign he's putting up in front of the shop, guess what? Don't shop there. It's that easy. Walk away. Now, I do want to point out that this 70-year-old man has served in the Vietnam War. He's probably sick and tired of political correct this political correctness thing. And he actually says this later. He was definitely ticked off about Dr. Seuss being banned. Um, but that's his business. If he wants to be, this is his protest. And that's why I understand why he did what he did. This was his protest. Dr. Seuss being banned because of transgender. I'm pretty sure Dr. Seuss probably didn't think much about racism and transgenderism when he was writing his book, his six books that were banned. But this is his protest. So you have this guy that walks into the store and starts yelling at him. This is probably half the problem. And this guy is actually proving to him that he's got a reason to say, you know what, F you. Okay. And now the second thing I want to point out here is you don't see the video here. Go to dumbasstalkingpolitics.com. I've got the video. This guy stands, not the shop owner. This guy stands probably about a foot taller than the shop owner. And he's trying to claim himself a woman. And he's getting in his face. And the shop owner doesn't even think twice about it. Goes right in. But the fight didn't stop there. It continued on the outs outside. Here's Meskis. Uh, starts. Here's where Meskis actually starts making an ass out of, her, out of himself. And he probably would have looked a lot better and a lot more sympathetic if he just, A, walked away, or B, and didn't say anything, or B, just never entered the store. So listen to this temper tantrum he threw. Trans women Get are off. women! Get a Trans women are women! Leave! Leave. 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 I'm out of your store! Leave! You leave! You leave! I'm here. I'm Let me here. ask you a question. Do you have a You don't get to ask that. I'll bet you do. You are a bigot. I don't care. You're a bigot and an ass. I hope so. Good. Because I want to be in your face because nobody really? confronts your really? stupid ass. You're nuts. You need to back off now. No, you do. So you back need to off. Back off now. I am trying to leave and you are Why don't me. you leave? I'm going to take a few more steps. Are you just going to check my ass you out? Check, you check tonight. You're not a Stop staring at my ass! Okay, this is the kind of behavior that does not make someone sympathetic to a transgender person. This is not, this is not a sympathetic... It, he's throwing a temper tantrum. And do you notice how insanely... I, I'm cal calling him a he. I have no respect. If someone wants to be called a she, well, you give me your pronouns i'll call you a she i don't care out of politeness maybe i'm not going to do that anymore i even and it's not a good thing because i used to call everybody sir or ma'am i stopped and that was out of pure respect something i learned a long time ago sir ma'am i don't do that anymore why because i never know if i'm talking to a sir or ma'am it's happened to me twice where i've been told well i'm not really a sir i'm kind of a uh, I'm kind of a ma'am. Uh, well, you know what? I He couldn't reason with this guy. He couldn't yell at this guy. Now he's belittling this guy. And you know something? The trans, tranny, just made the argument for the old man. Just made the argument for the old man. And he didn't get any sympathy after these videos were released because of this. And by the way, this is a council person. This is supposed to be a leader. 
The final clip is Sucher being interviewed after this whole thing was done. And he sums it up pretty well. You know, he sums it up pretty well. And notice, even the media is still being biased towards this weirdo. Listen to this. Some people think it's hurtful. Well, he told us that this hurt. But here's the thing. I don't give a about feelings anymore. I'm 70 I'm eight. I went to Vietnam to fight for all this. Do you think I care about some feelings? Absolutely not. Okay, again, you can tell this this guy doesn't have Mark Twain level wit. All right, that doesn't mean he's not wrong, right? That doesn't mean he's not right. I mean, it, it, it's I just find it amazing that people are demonizing this poor bastard. And yeah. He's old. He spent most of his life believing men were men and women were women. He doesn't like what's happening in the country he fought for. He doesn't like being abused because he believes in something different than anybody else. You know, if the trans population just sat back and didn't say anything and said, we just want to be trans, guess what he would say? Probably nothing. But the reality is they are affecting life for all of us. So, yeah, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's a lie. You can but this guy is just fed up with it. But this is an important example of what we're going to need to do as conservatives. Ben Shapiro's book, uh, The Authoritarian Moment, which came out last week, I, I read it this weekend, is 230 pages on how the left does this and how we fight this. His main, his main point, just say no. Men can't be women. Redistribution of wealth and socialism are evil. There is nothing good about open, open borders and defunding the police. Guns don't kill people. Criminals do. Racism is not built into white people. Racism is determined by actions. And I should have the right to say whatever I want and be able to defend myself in whatever I, way I see fit as long as it's legal. We are going to be faced with these scenarios. We're hearing about vaccine mandates. We're hearing about um, um, uh, mask mandates. We're hearing about vaccine passports. So we're going to face these scenarios, and we're going to face them soon. So if you need a vaccine passport, are you going to actually carry a vaccine passport, even though you actually have the vaccine? That's a question. Rhetorical. If someone says that you're unvaccinated and you're unvaccinated because, yeah, no, I, I don't want to use a vaccine. This Everyone compares on the left. They compare this vaccine to the polio vaccine or the smallpox vaccine. They're not the same thing. The polio and smallpox vaccine were investigated for like five years. I think more than five years for a couple of them. Because there were side effects. So, no, if I don't want to take that vaccine, or my dad doesn't, or someone doesn't want to take that vaccine, they should have the right to say, no, I, 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 I'm just not comfortable with it. And that should be good enough. People in the past, we live, the conservatives especially, the left never lived by this. Called And this is something out of Shapiro's book, and I think he referenced it somewhere, but I, I didn't really come expecting to talk too much about this, called the cordial, cord, cordiality principle. Cordial principle. We tried to be polite instead of pushing back when things didn't seem to be going that far. We are the majority in this country. We need to begin pushing back against this nonsense and nonsense it is. Because now, it, they're not going a little way now. Now they're trying to make 10-year-olds, 10-year-old boys into 10-year-old girls. They're doing that now. We've gone beyond reason. And now we're trying to be shut up. I mean, if I say a man is a man on Twitter, I could get banned. If I, I sit there and, and give vaccine information, we don't need a mask mandate because it, it's this thing is not killing anyone. I could get uh, suspended for misinformation. They suspended the president of the United States, for Christ's sake. 
How does that happen in this country? We need to do what this old guy did. Now, I'm not saying he's a hero or anything. I'm just saying he did the right thing. Just say no. Okay, visit my website at dumbassestalkingpolitics.com where I have the video and um, the videos, the audio, show notes, and all of the links. I hope you guys have a great day. This is Gene, and you listen to Dumbasses Talking Politics. <laughs>